Hello people, how are you doing? Welcome again to my channel. Welcome to Straight Out of Scriptures where we tell biblical truth and give scriptural perspective. If this is your first time on this channel, please don't forget to press the subscribe button, like the, po like the post, generally engage with this channel, drop your comments and all of that. Let your friends know We got on this journey in the first place because someone asked a question. He said, I pray so much, but I do not get answers. I, I still have so much lack. He's not saying I don't have answers in certain areas, but he's saying concerning my finances, concerning uh, my finances, concerning my needs, they are not supplied, they are not met. What am I exactly doing wrong? Why am I in financial lack despite all of my prayers? And I have nothing against prayers. I pray myself and I tell people that we need to pray more even as the body of Christ. But one important truth we need to tell ourselves is that the Bible, the whole counsel of God, includes many, many principles. Prayer is a principle. And another principle is that there is a principle, there are principles that guide uh, even money and finances uh, according to God's mind, according to God's way. And I started by sharing that last week. And we said that um, God's financial principle, the way to, to go about it in God's standard, in God's plan, we said that number one, you need to understand what is called stewardship, Christian stewardship, which is the principle that says basically that God is the owner of everything. We are just stewards. And we said uh, it's required in stewardship that a man be found faithful. And principle number two uh, that I shared last week, I, I also said that you have to understand the blessedness of work that working and work is not a cost like many people say that work is a way by which god at work is a means by which god meets the needs of the world it's how we create after him is how we fulfill the creation mandates we create after him god had already given adam a work even before sin came into the world therefore Work is blessed. You must work. If you do not work, scripture says, the psalmist says, it will bless the work of your hands. So you can pray, but if you do not have a work of your hands, there is absolutely little that God will bless. Or if I can use the word nothing, that God will bless. Ask yourself, am I working? And then number three, we said that giving is important. Giving is a principle. I said giving is important not only for you, giving is also important for others. When you give, you meet the need of others. When others also give, they meet your own need also. Bible says in Luke chapter 6, give and it shall be given unto you. Can you see that? It's a channel. It's a, it's a spiritual principle. It's a system God has created in order for us, for our needs to be met and for the need of the world also to be met. Alright, I spoke about that and I also talked about saving. I said another principle is to be a wise saver. A saver financially is one who builds preserves he builds and then he preserves what he has what he has gotten you must learn that principle it's an important principle of god and i think i ended here uh, and you see straight after saving another principle you must learn is the principle of investment uh, it is not enough that you save you must also invest uh, invest wisely if you don't invest you will not have much and that's a principle you see whatever it is you have saved which you have built up uh, uh, the idea is that when an investment opportunity comes along uh, you are able to take advantage of it why because you have saved uh, so it is important that you invest uh, you invest uh, it is very key it is very important uh, bible says let the wise listen but you see, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the designing get guidance in investment it is important that you see cancel is important don't just put your money because somebody just came around and said you know what um this investment i put in and the roi is so great i i got so much money uh, and, and you just put your money there or someone told you about poultry or fishery and then you just go and start without understanding the nitty-gritty you don't understand the hazards you don't understand what you need to do right in order for you to really be successful at it many people quickly get into things without seeking counsel and bible says in proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 that that is wrong that is wrong you must invest 
wisely you must invest wisely another thing when it comes to investment is that you must avoid get rich quick schemes i know people say you know you can take advantage of things like that but many people absolutely many people especially after uh, the lockdown many people come up in nigeria all over the world asking people to invest and getting serious rois 25 percent 30 percent of people went as far as talking about 50 percent they said they were doing goods uh they were doing and uh, they were into animal animal uh, animal rearing they were into many things some people said they were into forex and you know a lot of people put in their money and they lost their money the bible says in proverbs 28 verse 20 the trustworthy will get a rich reward but the person who wants to get rich quick we only get into trouble we only get into trouble be careful even though the bible says we should invest we must also be careful how we invest be careful because many people have gotten into debt serious debt because of how they invested another principle when it comes to investing is to diversify your holdings listen i know that you might have got your first money through forex but don't keep all your money in forex when you have investment one principle of investment is to diversify understand you need to learn how maybe the mortgage market works properties uh, uh, buy lands uh, in this what you're doing is you're diversifying diversify your holds uh, bible says in exercise chapter 11 and verse 2 give portions to seven years to eight uh, for you do not know what disaster will come upon the heart so another principle that's principle number five is to invest principle number six avoid debt avoid debt one who avoids entering into debt is careful and strategic with money and with debt you must be careful you must be strategic now the question that goes is what is debt now understand that debt is not um what many people define debt to be uh according to scriptures and according to definitions of the rabbi and jewish tradition a debt is not uh, a debtor is not someone who went and caught and, and borrowed money that's not who a debtor is um you you can't call that person a debtor because when he borrowed money they were, he entered into a contractual obligation so he probably said listen borrow me a million naira if i come to you and i say you know what borrow me a million naira or, or can i get two thousand dollars from you right and i'm going to return it by december 31st now it is wrong for you to call me a debtor because what we have entered into is a contractual obligation whether it is signed whether it is verbal it means that i'm going to return the money on the 31st now i become a debtor if on january 1st i had not have not returned the money to you then i become a debtor and you even see this in banks many banks uh, uh, i remember recently the cbn was told the uh, commercial banks to publish the names of debtors uh, and you look at the list uh, they publish the list and all of that you would discover that the people they publish their name were not all the persons that took loan from the bank the people they publish their name were defaulters so you need to understand that getting into debt um uh, is not call it being called a debtor is not really is is the problem it is not the thing of taking loan because at certain times to do certain investments you might have to take loan or get certain money to do it but scripture records that we must pay back promptly the bible says in psalms 37 verse 21 the wicked borrow and do not repay but the righteous give generously many people are in poverty today because they are in serious debt bible says come back later i'll give it tomorrow when you now have it with you proverbs chapter 3 and verse 28 now understand that there is bondage in debt even if you are going to take a loan or do anything understand what you are getting into you don't take a loan and go and and, and go and start uh, a poultry business that you have no idea about now when you get into debt you already know you are in trouble why because you are investing in something you don't even understand how it works so it is quite important it's quite important that we understand the bible says the root the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender proverb chapter 20 verse 7 do not borrow if you do not understand what you are getting into debt can deny you again of opportunity to for god to work in our lives let me say this to you at certain times when you need a thing the first thing to do is not to go and borrow the first thing to do is not to go and lend many believers are stopping god or have stopped god from doing the miraculous in their life so they are not experiencing the miraculous uh, as it were why because they are quickly going to take loan to borrow 
you must first of all learn to sit and pray, to wait upon the Lord, to ask God to do it for you supernaturally, to let God provide for your needs. Bible says God shall supply all your needs. Oh, through Christ, not through the bank, through Christ. As many times you may have to take a loan, but I'm trying to say to you that, listen, the first place of call should be God. In meeting your financial needs, debt can also lead to envy and greed. Many people have entered into debt. Why? Because of envy, because of greed. You are using an iPhone 10. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely, you have not even fully maximized the capacity of that phone. But because your friend is using an iPhone 13, you also want to go and use an iPhone 13. And right now, you are taking a loan. You are borrowing. You are spending much more than you are making. Why? Because you also want to compete you have entered a rat race uh, the bible says that beware don't be greedy for what you don't have real life is not measured by how much we own luke chapter 12 and verse 15 um, 12 15 uh, listen depth can disrupt your spiritual growth uh, bible says in galatians chapter 5 22 to 23 the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control self-control listen i've seen when a man is in debt he cannot pay his bills he's behind in his bills when his brain is not concentrated he can't concentrate when he's doing any spiritual thing he cannot do it well because mentally he is disturbed mentally he is, he is disturbed why why is that so because is in debt because his mind is not stayed because his mind is not stayed on god listen be careful how you use debt if you are going to get into true riches if you are going to get into wealth if you are going to have enough to do the will of god bible says he will give unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness therefore in order to live in the fullness of god one thing you will need to learn financially is self-control one thing you will need to learn financially is to be able to say no to certain things and then number seven principle you must learn is to spend wisely the prudent consumer one who enjoys the fruits of their labor must guide against materialism spend wisely number one principle under this is that beware of idols beware of idols you shall not make yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below this is materialism this is the culture of this world. Be careful how you spend money. Be careful you do not make cars, earthly possessions, your idols. Be careful. Guide against greed. I have discovered nothing really brings tangible happiness. There is nothing that exists that in, the, in this world created that can give you lasting happiness. Bible says in Luke 12, 15, Beware, don't be greedy. For a man does not possess, a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things he possesses be careful seek moderation seek moderation bible says proverbs 38 to 9 give me neither poverty nor riches but give me only my daily bread otherwise i may have too much and disown you and say who is the lord or i may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my god i mean the idea of scriptures read through scriptures is for us to live a contented life be contented learn contentment because you have learned to be to abound and to abase to live in much and to live in lack whatever situation you are be contented let the fruit of joy that's the fruit of the spirit let it be enough let it satisfy you you must learn these things another thing is that you must learn when we say spend wisely don't waste god's resource don't forget principle number one it says that we are stewards that means god is the owner of all things now if god gives a thing to you you must learn to manage it well one of the things we must learn to do with our money is to manage it well you must spend god's money wisely you cannot be a waster when they all had enough to eat jesus said to them john chapter 6 verse 12 he said to his disciples gather the pieces that are left over let nothing be wasted let nothing be wasted god is against waste therefore be careful how you spend and that's principle number seven principle number eight very quickly you must learn to budget 
you must learn to budget it is important we budget you see you can't just spend everything i, I said that you must you must apportion your money well uh, this is how much i'm going to invest okay let's assume you you you, you collect about five hundred thousand or let, let's assume you collect up uh, two thousand uh, thousand dollars or five hundred dollars in a month or oh, you, you would have to allot how much am i saving how much am i investing how much uh, am i giving uh, you, you should have that from the very beginning from the get from the word get from the get go how much am i spending how much am i giving to myself uh, how much is my running cost for the month you should have put those things down now understand that when your savings when your money to be spent is finished uh, you should not just quickly go to your savings and keep put, uh, and spend it and finish it uh, because that, that means you are not budgeting. That means you do not have a plan. The day an investment opportunity will come because you do not have savings, you do not have stocks piled up in your account, you will not be able to take advantage of it. And opportunities come to those who are prepared. It doesn't just appear every time, but it comes to those who are prepared. And therefore, you hear people say the rich will always get rich. Why? Because they have enough money to be able to take advantage of opportunities. Therefore, have a budget and it is not enough to have a budget you must also learn the discipline of sticking with your budget if the money I, i've had people I'm, I'm in conversation with people and then they say you know what i, I don't have money for that and, and people look at them and say but you are rich you can't tell me you don't have money but what they are saying is that listen the money i have to spend is finished i i cannot go and take money uh for investment i can't go and take money for savings i can't go and take money for giving M the money is finished so you would have to wait in next month uh, and then i'll put you in the budget and that's very important that's very key bible says in proverbs 27 23 to 24 he said be sure you know the condition of your flocks give careful attention to your heart for riches do not endure forever and a crown is not secure for all generations you must watch over your finances that is very key budgeting is the act of watching over your finances watching over your health you must watch over it you, you i mean you put your stock down uh, you, you must now sit down and begin to analyze it many of us are in debt and many of us don't have enough because we don't pay so much attention reflecting on our financial spending reflecting on our income reflecting on how much we have how much we really own and how we spend you see you must understand your spending pattern if you are going to change it as believers don't say i, I mean uh, god provides i i know a lady i was talking to a lady uh and she was saying you know i do not care uh when money comes i just spend it because god will provide and i said listen you are going to live in so much poverty and pain because even god is a manager what god gives you for for now you it might not be just for today it might be for a season now some people have finished spending a money for a season in a day now they are going to go around that season in lack why because they have spent frivolously what god has given for them to have spent in years and that is key you see as believers we must also understand financial principles these scriptures are in your bible they are in your bible it's not just about prayers it's about practicing principles somebody i, I know i used to know a family i mean when they enter into money you know how do you know by their spending they become very lavish they go to restaurant they don't cook at home anymore why because they have entered into money and now the money is seasonal they now get to a time of lack which may last months and then they begin to borrow they begin to seek for help from people they become beggarly why because they were not wise in the way they were spending things i believe it's time for us to learn to get some financial spiritual education money is actually a defense but scripture says that uh, as wisdom is also a defense he said the excellency of wisdom is that it gives life to those who have it so wisdom is practical insight in every situation to have the ability to know what to do what do i do with this money it's not just just sitting back and say glory to god my faith deliver yes i agree with you your faith deliver hallelujah your faith has delivered but how long will that money last would you invest it like the man jesus gave a parable and some guys were giving five talents some some other guy was giving ten and some guy was giving one and they multiplied it when god give you resource god expects you to manage it well it's like you giving your child something if you give your child a car uh, uh, maybe he's now 23 and then you give the child a car 
and then you see the way the child manages the car the way he pins the car the way he uses the car now you are proud you can say oh i think now i should buy you a benz you, you no longer need that toyota what, what's going on because the guy has purchased for himself a higher inheritance now you can say that man but that's also god he said jesus said in that parable he said he who has used it well he said obtain for himself a higher inheritance so it's in scriptures it's the principle of god if we use well what god gives us uh, then we would also be able to multiply that which God gives us. And God will say, listen, you are now due for an increase. Many of us have stayed on the same level financially. And the reason we have stayed on the same level is because of our financial recklessness. No matter how much you are earning, you can save. I mean, I've learned this principle since I was a student. No matter how small your money is, you can save. You can save. Somebody said, but it's not enough. I said, assume that it's some thousands ahead of it. It will also not be enough. If you're collecting 10,000, assuming you are collecting 8K, you will still live with 8,000 Naira. If you're collecting $500, assume you are collecting $400, you will see you will not die. But the $100 you are setting apart, after 3 years will become some amount of money. And you would have leverage to even resign from your work to be able to do something new with your life. And that's very important. That's very key. And I think we need to, as believers, begin to operate in a higher level of financial grace and wisdom. And this is possible. Kingdom transfer is not something we only pray for. It's something we also prepare for. And how we prepare is how we manage it. And you see, finally, I want to give you a principle here tonight. Uh, and that principle is that you must develop your faith for finances. Listen to this. Develop your faith for finances. And this is very key this is very key this is very important uh, the bible says ask and you shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you matthew chapter 7 when he say ask he didn't say ask uh, for for health he didn't say ask for power that word ask is generic you can ask for anything uh, james chapter 4 he said you have not because you ask not uh, it is time for us to begin to ask god for financial supplies uh, it is time for us to begin to ask god for supply for abundance uh, and if you ask him how are you sure he's going to do it uh, by faith uh, by faith uh, faith is the currency of this kingdom faith is how we obtain things in this kingdom uh, faith is how you draw from the bank of heaven uh, the treasure house of god uh, God is so rich. Bible says, Agai says, uh, Siva is mine, gold is mine. Uh, scripture says in the book of Psalms 50, the Bible says, uh, Tacatus upon a thousand hills are the Lord. Uh, the Lord has all things in abundance. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that though he was rich, for our sake he became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. Uh, scripture says to us in Galatians chapter 3 that we have become a uh, partakers uh, we have become we, we, we they were of faith are blessed uh, even with faithful abraham uh, we have become ears uh, of the blessings of abraham uh, listen you need to build your faith for finances you need to build your faith for finances bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 it is god who give you power to make wealth sir god is the one who gives you the ability to make wealth sir how will you enter into wealth and to financial supply sir you must build your faith sir i'm, I'm appalled many believers are satisfied with faith for healing they just have faith that they are going to live in health and healing that's fantastic that's fine but that same faith that can give you health and healing that obtains salvation for you that same faith can also give you financial supply that same faith can also give you more than enough listen people say we know where we start talking about money um we start we start uh, we start talking about things that are not in scripture but that's that's all that's not true that's not true the same scriptures that talks about health healing also talks about financial abundance uh, also talk about true riches god is the giver of true riches uh, if you would ask if you will seek if you will follow the principles in scriptures uh, you might not be in serious and so much wealth uh, but you will have uh, enough uh, to live uh, the as to live the kind of life god has apportioned for you to live a life of godliness to live a life that you will not be poor and be beggarly that is not the life that god desires of the righteous that's not the life god wants from us listen to this i have seen insincere people who are not sincere who are poor people and i have seen rich people who are also not sincere so believing that money is the problem in the world or the problem of christianity is a lie 
we have christians that backbite poor people backbite poor people bitter living in offenses poor people who are not sincere who are not truthful so also we also have rich people who are the same is the same lot money is colorless money does not make people change somebody said you know what i've seen people get into money and they become proud that's all a lie they were proud before it was actually poverty that actually made them humble because when you are poor there's nothing to be proud about when they get got into money what actually happened was that who they were can now be fully expressed so don't think money is the problem the actual problem is the love of money the love of money is the root of evil our love as believers should be to god we should love the Lord our God with the whole of our heart, our soul, our spirit. Sir. And if you have done that, then you wouldn't have any space inside of you to love money. But money is to be used because scripture says it is a defense. Sir. Bible tells us that money is a defense. Money is to be used because you will need it to do certain things even in the kingdom. To do certain things in the kingdom. To buy anything you need. Somebody said, you know, we don't need all these technical gadgets. We don't need them. Even if you are going to do it, if you are going to sit on bench pews, you will still need to buy them do you understand what we're trying to say so money is key god is not afraid to bless his people god blessed solomon so much abraham was not poor by any standard these were patriarchs i mean we sing songs abraham blessings am i glory to god these people were not poor by any standard in fact if you calculate in today's economy what the scripture says that abraham had he was a he was a millionaire in dollars he was a millionaire in dollars if you consider that even in nigeria he was a billionaire how because there were principles the blessings of the lord makes richer and he adds no sorrow you need to understand faith for finances the reason your faith in finance has not grown is because you have not read so much about it i want to challenge you i want to challenge you to listen to what i'm saying again and again i want to challenge you to get books i want you to actually get into the scriptures and begin to study for yourself this is straight out of scriptures what does the bible really say about finances and get those principles for yourself and get them working for your life because if you work these principles it's not just about confessing i get i have money when the money comes when god delivers it to you how will you spend them how will you invest them how will you invest what will you do with money how will you save how will you give how will you do your budgeting these are key things that are important in scriptures i want to encourage you to build your faith and one of the important things about faith is first of all to believe when you believe scripture says in romans chapter 10 that then you then confess with your heart do you confess as it concerns your finances do you speak as it concerns your finances i mean let, let's just do this together as we round off even our session today can you say can you just say and say just say these things after me i'm the blessed of god i have all things and i abound money comes to me i have all things all things are mine the lord supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory in christ jesus money comes to me angels are released for my sake and they go to the nations of the earth to the four corners of the heart and they bring my blessings to me satan take your hands of my finances demons take your hands of my finances i have all that i need i have all that i need to do the will of god i have all that pertains to life and to godliness i'm not poor i'm rich the lord sends men to me men give to me men give to me those who don't know me give to me i receive blessings and riches even from strange places in the the name of Jesus I receive financial help in the name of Jesus all that I lay my hands upon are blessed in the name of Jesus fruitfulness come even to me in the name of Jesus I know for certain I know for sure that though my beginning be small I'm laying on stock even in the high places in big places I'm the righteous therefore I live an inheritance even for my children and my children children in the name of Jesus concerning me heaven is open the heaven over me is open in the name of jesus god is sending blessings to me in the morning in the night in the day i receive the blessings of the morning i receive the blessings of the night in the name of jesus i'm a fruitful field whatever it is that i invest is multiplying in the name of jesus i have harvest even of all that i give of all that i invest i have wisdom even to make wise decisions financially in the name 
name of Jesus, uh, all things are mine. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All things are mine. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Let that, let that be your confession. Don't speak poverty. Don't speak lack. Just speak faith. Keep speaking faith. Keep speaking faith. Those who are sick, they keep speaking faith so that their healing can come. Poverty is also a spiritual state. Uh, you also can change that state by speaking positively, affirmatively, scriptural things into your life. And I know that your time and your season of change has come. Don't miss next week. I want to share something with you that God began to share with me certain weeks ago as it concerns Solomon's blessings. Listen to this. Solomon was called one of the wealthiest persons that ever lived. In fact, God said, because you do not ask for wealth, I'm going to give you wealth that will surpass those before you and those after you. But how did he enter into that wealth? How did he enter into that wealth? Many people I mean, I was talking to a child and he was I said, God, God promised like he promised Solomon, I'm going to make you wealthy. And the guy looked at me and said, he told me the same thing too. But how would you enter into that wealth? I want to break that code for you. See how the wealth of Solomon came into being from scriptures, not outside of scriptures, from scriptures. We're going to see how he got that. And I want you not to miss that. Breaking the Solomon code. We're going to be here next week. I don't want you to miss it. Subscribe to this channel again. Don't miss any episode. Tell a friend about it. The Lord keep you.